is like vinyl sheet pile with but with integrated gasket inside the female lock. We need to remember also that vinyl sheet piles have uh, female and male lock. The steel sheet piles have always the same locks. Vinyl have female and male locks. So inside the female lock, we decided to put in a process of post extrusion. Hello, I'm Kevin Hello. Lathan here as your host in, in uh, the, this edition of the Pile Buck podcast, uh, where we discuss everything from pile driving to foundation drilling uh, to marine construction. And today we're going to be talking about sheet pile, particularly some vinyl sheet pile. Uh, we've got David Yazinski uh, with uh, ESC Steel, who I've known uh, personally for, for quite a few years. Uh, I'm just meeting David. Uh, he's the director of engineering and specifically involved in the, uh, in the uh, uh, production and applications uh, for vinyl sheet piling. Uh, welcome. Welcome, David. Good morning. Good morning, Kevin. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for our invitation. It is a pleasure for me. So, uh, you know, we're, we're going to talk about the vinyl sheet pile part of your business. ESC Steel is what I've known it in the past. And, and, and I know that uh, um, it was a started as a family run business in Southeast Asia, uh, New Zealand and and other places in Southeast Asia. And um, a very entrepreneurial group, uh, uh, really hitting a lot of different niches, um, I think. And I was always impressed with some of their uh, solutions uh, for uh, a driven pile and some of the sections that were developed by uh, Bruce Colson and his father over the years. Um, and the vinyl sheets, you know, I'm a, if I'm anything in this life, I'm a marine pile driver. I've never uh, uh, had a lot of experience with the vinyl sheet pile, and primarily because usually I'm involved with some larger projects and, and, and there's always some drivability challenges. But I understand that uh, uh, with some of the new technology that, that's, been, uh, that's been addressed, um, we'd just like to hear more about the, uh, you know, the various applications and, and uh, kind of where that's at. Yeah, uh, for, for the listeners and the pile yeah, drivers. Exactly, exactly. I, I think uh, we're going to have a chance to chat about uh, our recent developments regarding vinyl sheet pies and how we can change the vision over this product, over this technology. And um, we're going to tell about our experience, know how. And, you know, to raise some myths that the vinyl sheet pies are only limited for small, lightweight, uh, application is it's not really true and we we have some quite interesting case study to talk about excellent no we're, i'm looking forward to that because you know the the best thing about vinyl sheets or pvc sheets is they're plastic and they're going to be here longer than me and you yes and exactly. and uh which is We've all driven the steel sheet pile and tried to coat them, blah, 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 sandblast. It just never quite works. It's not good. Mm -hmm. uh, you get the strength, but you just don't get the longevity. So um, I'm a fan in, in civil engineering and the built environment of our infrastructures. We should build for longer durations. Exactly. All right. Now, we've always talked, when I first got started building bridges in this industry, most structures were designed for a 50 year life cycle. And I mm -hmm. always, and, and now they're 75, 100, 150, they're throwing numbers at them. But I tell you, here's my opinion on it, David. I think the increment that we're using is the wrong increment. We're using years. I would rather move towards the increment of millennia, one, a thousand years. Uh, yeah, okay, so it, it, it may take, Maybe we're just, it's the, the, the jobs will be a, a quarter of a millennia or something like that. I'd rather change the vocabulary. And I think that what you're doing with uh, uh, utilizing the technology of sheet piling and the experience that ESC has in, in, in a lot of these niches in different shapes, if, if you can get this figured out, I think it's a big deal because we can start going towards that end goal, which is, you know, build it once like the Romans, right? Yeah, exactly. 2,000 years. Exactly. Yeah. 
we can see this in uh, this trend to renovate the, the the old structures like hydropower plants that were built like 50 100 years ago so this is uh, only one small piece of time of over the whole history of the construction so yeah when we when we see the ancient buildings this is quite impressive yeah so so part of it is moving from compression loads to tension loads right that's yeah. the challenge we've got longer spans we're trying to do more creative works um, where does the where does the vinyl sheet pile fit into this where we could have a structure that's going to last a long time we know that it it's uv protected and it's corrosion uh, uh, you know proof essentially mm -hmm. And, and you're not going to get the marine borers and all this stuff that's going to degrade all this infrastructure that you've built. Uh, but what else can you tell me about uh, what you're doing there at ESC that's going to benefit uh, humanity? Okay, so um, we have to start from, uh, from the fact that we know the PVC from more than 100 years. It was first synthesized uh, more than 100 years. I think in a construction, in, in engineering in general, the PVC um, um, is used for more than eight years, very well known material. So we know that after eight years, it doesn't dis disappear because of corrosion and other type of degradation. So I think um, the, the, the guarantee for vinyl sheet piles we, we give is 50 years, but of course it won't disappear after 50 years. We can see some changes, small minor changes in the, in the whole structure of the material, but it won't disappear. So especially for the applications related to cutoff walls, where we have to control the seepage uh, in, in the flood banks, um, in the cutoff walls around tailing dams, for example, in, uh, in mining, I think is a, is a perfect, perfect solution because it will stay much, much longer than 100 or 200 years. It oh, won't I think degrade. so too. So, yeah, right. it won't degrade. You know, we all speak about the issue of the plastic in environment, but when we use it in a right way, in a smart way, to not throw plastic everywhere and we can recycle it, uh, the plastic to create the vinyl sheet pipes, for example, it's a perfect, you know, perfect solution for us, for the cost, the, 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 the cost saving for the project, for the maintenance, but also lower cost of the environmental. Um, and what is very important, if there will be unnecessary in the future, we can take out the vinyl sheet piles from the ground and we can recycle them once again. So it's a big, big advantage over, for example, the, the steel sheet piles that can be corroded after 50 years. and. We cannot take it out, take it out from, from the ground. How do you drive it now into some more difficult driving conditions? I think it's there's there's certainly some ideal applications, and we're trying to you're trying to stretch the limits of these applications. But hard driving is the is the is the most is the most challenging one in mm -hmm. my estimation. Yes, exactly. So there is a myth uh, in the civil engineering market that the vinyl sheet piles are only for a soft soil and not very long um, uh, length of the, of the vinyl sheet piles, but it is not true. The, the experience we have is telling us that we can install vinyl sheet piles in every soil condition that we can drive steel sheet piles. Uh, all of this is possible because we use the same equipment like for a steel sheet pipe. So starting from the excavator uh, with the cranes and also piling rigs. To piling rigs, to excavator, to cranes, we attach the vibro hammer uh, with different weights, different sizes, different powers. But the only difference uh, during the installation of the vinyl sheet pipes and the steel sheet pipes is for a vinyl sheet pipes, we always, as an ESC steel, we recommend uh, using mandrel, uh, which is a steel guide. Uh, right. It works like a knife cutting the soil during the installation. So it is very easy. We just slip the vinyl sheet pipes into the steel guide. We drive them together into the ground, and then we just take out the steel guide from from the from the ground and um, um, make this operation once again with another vinyl sheet pipe. Uh, and this is this is the most important thing. 
the, our experience we uh, we developed in last last year in recent years uh, tell us that it is possible to really drive the vinyl sheet pipes in every same condition uh, even the, if the soil has uh, NSPT blows around 50 without pre-drilling, without water jetting, which is also the, those methods we can use for the vinyl sheet pipes to make more easy but it's not always necessary. With proper uh, equipment, with proper steel guide designed by our company, uh, it is possible. And I was uh, with witness uh, on the one project where the contractor couldn't drive steel sheet pipes with the length of uh, 35 feet, and we easily drive uh, 35 feet along vinyl sheet pipes in the same ground. The problem was the layer of fat clay, which was very, very stiff, very hard fat clay, and the steel sheet pipes couldn't penetrate this uh, this layer, and uh, our vinyl sheet pipes with special steel guide easily went through this layer of the soil. So that was the mandrel? That was the mandrel that was able to penetrate exactly. it? And was exactly. that an impact drive then with the mandrel? It was the vibrohammer, vibrohammer, piling rig, and mandrel. Okay, yeah. uh, I've 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 also had difficulty in in uh, hard clay and sometimes even soft clay yes. with a vibro hammer, and yeah, exactly. uh, I've got my own theories about that, uh, which have to do with the uh, electrical affinity to to water uh, that clay mm -hmm. has, uh, but the yes. that uh, um, may or may not apply to to the vinyl uh, sheets, but uh, that's where the vibration. Uh, it becomes uh, ineffective, and and with mm -hmm. vinyl sheets you don't have the weight, right? You you don't necessarily have the same yeah. weight as you do as a piece of steel, so yes. so it's not yes. dropping under its own weight. So uh, yeah, I'd like to see some of those mandrels. I don't I don't know. Uh, I know I'm familiar with uh, years ago um, some pile. We used to drive some thin pile that was particularly mm -hmm. thin, and it was hard to drive. And we'd drive that with a mandrel. It was cylindrical, mm -hmm. it was pipe pile, right? And and it was it was um, it was mostly just because it was just a thin shell, and that was the design of it. Worked fine in place, but getting it there was another was another uh, challenge. Uh, so we used to drive those in the mandrel. The the mandrels for a for a, 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 a you know trapezoid shaped or square shaped pile are all custom based on size, correct? Or is there mm -hmm. one mandrel you can use for several sizes? No. No, actually, there is uh, two ways we can describe this uh, this this topic because for every profile we need to design special mandrel because okay. the mandrel need to have exactly the same shape uh, right. because those elements need to fit together. But the difference is that if we have a various length uh, in a one wall, uh, for example, six feet, eight feet, ten feet. We can uh, attach to the mandrel special special slider that reduce the length of the vinyl sheet pipe. So, for example, we order uh, in this case mandrel um, with the total length 10 feet, but then we attach the slider uh, four feet down to reduce the the, um, the reduce the length of the vinyl for a six. But but then we just move uh, two feet up, eight feet. And then we just take out the slider and we install 10 feet in a vinyl pipe. So sometimes you might just go with the mandrel on its own and then get the sheet in there. And sometimes yeah. you're attaching the sheet to the mandrel and it just depends yeah, on but the geology. We need to remember that we need to remember that we need to keep the one profile because one profile is fit to only one type of the, of the steel guide. But the length length can be can be various. You know, from an engineering perspective, um, is there a particular process when you're designing sheet piles, or you just design them for across the board all applications? Is there special chemistry or 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 shape for different conditions? What d d dial me into the yes. engineering of it a bit. Okay, so depends of the of the application if. If the application will be related to retaining structure, there is another approach. And if the application will be related to cutoff hole, there is another approach. I will start from the second because it will be much easier, much quicker to explain. 
Um, for a cut of all, we don't have any different of pressure and ma a majority of, of the of the application of the project. So we just need to focus only about the length and the size uh, and the, and the um, actually the width of the profile. If the uh, the application is to control the seepage, we um, choose the widest profile that is possible to. You know, make the installation quicker and only uh, allow water go only through the lungs because the water cannot go through the uh, through the vinyl sheet pipes, of course. Uh, and so we have to focus only on the length and the uh, the the width. If we talk about the retaining structure, there is a, another issue. So the approach to calculation uh, between the vinyl and the, and the steel is the same. So we use the Euro codes in Europe, for example. Uh, but then we have to understand what is the difference between the material, steel and PVC. What are the different of the behavior during the load? We need to remember that PVC has a more or less five, six, seven, depends on the steel grade, a lower tensile strength. And the young modulus is 75 um, more uh, lower. It means that for a steel, what we should calculate first are not the displacement because the, the whole structure is quite rigid, quite, quite stiff. So we don't achieve the high displacement of the whole structure. First, we probably will touch the, the maximum bending moment. That's why the, the design engineers focus firstly on the section modulus of the, but we need to remember that the section modulus is only geometrical parameter. We need to remember about the issue of the very low uh, young modulus. So we're gonna achieve very high displacement of the wall and then just the, the maximum bending moment, because we can have the situation that the wall we displace around six, seven inches. So we shouldn't allow this, uh, this project to be built in this way, but the bending moment will be only touched in, in 20% because material is much more elastic. Uh, then we have to remember about also the issue with the creep effect. Uh, this topic was a little bit touched in the recent, uh, recent update of the uh, US Army uh, Corps of Engineer uh, recommendation for, for the flood walls, but they didn't say more how to calculate the creep effect. But this issue is very well addressed in the German uh, standard, uh, DIN, uh, which describe not only the production, but also the, um, the, the installation, but also the design process. And design process is very important because Using the, the approach that the German say in this standard, we, we, can, uh, we can calculate with high um, probability what will be the creep effect, what will be the reduction of the tensile strength and the young modulus over that time. So this approach is very similar to calculating the geosynthetics in the function of the, um, uh, in the, function of the reinforce of the soil. So we take the reduction factors, A1 depends on the creep, A2 depends on the time of the, of the structure, uh, A3 depends on the temperature, A4 of the, um, um, of the, I think, atmospherical conditions. So we collect all these uh, reduction factors and uh, we divide by this value and uh, the tensile strength and the young modulus. And at the end, we know after, for example, 25 years, 50 years, we know what will be the, 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 the tensile strength um, after, after such a time. So it will allow us to not use the safety factor too, like all the other producers use. Thanks to this approach, we can much more um, closer uh, calculated the safety factor over uh, 25 years, 50 years, 10 years, depends of the, depends of the um, length, uh, length of in, in a time. So this is, this is the, the, the biggest difference. We, we can see that there is a lot of similarities, but we need to remember about the material, 
that is it behaves much different, is not so strong like steel, and also the creep effect. That's why the, the, the vinyl sheet piles have some limitations regarding using the for the protection of excavation or very high retaining structures. For this, it's much better to use steel sheet piles. What is the exposed, uh, typical exposed height uh, mm -hmm. uh, of, of a vinyl sheet pile retention wall? Uh, so Two feet, uh, 10 feet? What, what I, I would say closer to eight feet. Without eight any feet. additional support, eight feet is something we can do. It depends on the soil condition. If it's cohesive soil, non-cohesive soil, depends on the water level. You know, there is a, a that's why we always have to uh, have the, the information from the client about the, the project, uh, about the soil condition, the possible um, load on the top. But I would say that eight feet is something we can do if, uh, if we decide to use some tie bags and any, any other support like anchors, um, we, can, we can cover much higher length, but not so high like, like for a steel sheet device. Well, unless you put a belt and suspenders on it. And see, the thing that I like about vinyl sheets also is it, it, creates, a, um, it creates a form. Right, so so uh, I've seen applications where um, in marine uh, steel sheet piles with cold rolled sheets, where I was like, well, you know, if it was me, I wouldn't use them there because of the the, the way that water can flow through the interlocks, and uh, mm -hmm. it might be a backfill of uh, like a flowable fill, which is lean concrete, which is cheap. And um, I was like, well, okay, that's a, that's a reasonable solution, you know, and, mm -hmm. and, and the vinyl sheets lend themselves to that too, because it could, it becomes a self-supporting uh, uh, the earth, right. In that wedge that usually uh, there's active pressure on the wall. Yeah. Uh, so I think there's some, 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 some uh, adjustments you could make uh, uh, from a, a geotechnical standpoint too, that would, would allow to kind of stretch the, the vinyl sheets to some of these uh, waterfront applications because the, you know, what, what, what I see is um, look, we, we got a, 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 a oceans are rising. I'm not, I'm not a, a believer in the kind of the global warming kind of thing, you know, uh, uh, politically, but, uh, but I, I think the, 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 the planet changes over, uh, over time. And, and yeah. uh, I think we're, as human beings, we're very, uh, you know, we think we control everything, including the temperature, which we don't, but it, it uh, it's, it's a function of, 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 of surviving, um, you know, to the, to the next generations. And, and with, uh, you know, floods uh, in low-lying areas. You know, New Orleans and uh, the the coastal Carolinas and whatnot. They're they're low-lying areas, right? So there's going to be solutions that are going to be put in place, and I I would like to see those solutions be something like vinyl that we know is going to last for an extended period of time, and not exactly. just be uh, something we put there. We and we haven't figured out how to handle the mm -hmm. corrosion of steel, right? So. Um, you know, I applaud you for that and, and pushing the limits of, of, uh, of this technology. And I think it's, it's not only uh, some of the specifications, as you noted, from the, the German uh, European specifications and kind of looking at it a little differently. Um, you know, I think there's also uh, uh, opportunities in just the shape. And I see that you have some different shapes. Yes. Um, uh, hexagon, octagon shapes, but, but uh, places that have openings in them mm -hmm, now, exactly. with that i see a, a a tremendous amount of opportunity because anytime there's a void space whether it's octagon shaped or round or hexagon shape uh there's an opportunity to to, to uh, as a driver pile driver and driller uh we can reinforce that wall mm -hmm. and and, and uh, make it more self-supporting stretch the limits of height um, make it applicable to some of these waterfront uh, protection schemas that's going to be long lasting. And yeah. um, that's what I'm excited about. Uh, have, have, you, have you done much research or do you have any thoughts on that, utilizing that void space for additional, even if it is a steel pile to, to reinforce it, it would be in a sealed vinyl environment. Yeah, um, exactly. So we have even some some applications where the steel sheet pipes were so much corroded 
that it wasn't possible to just take them out. Uh, so in front of them, we put the vinyl sheet piles and between those two elements, so vinyl sheet piles and the steel sheet piles, we pour the concrete to, right. to make, this, um, make this structure much more long lasting. Yeah, so regarding the shapes, uh, in general, uh, when we compare the, the steel sheet pies and vinyl sheet pies, we can talk about the Z shape and U shape. But also in our offer, we can find a quite interesting shapes like jagged wall, we, we call it jagged wall, which is very thin profile with, our, with zero tens, uh, maybe bending moment a capacity, but it's a perfect solution because it's very wide and it's perfect for a cutoff wall. So it's very wide. It doesn't have to be very strong in terms of bending. So that's why it's a perfect solution because it's also very cheap. Uh, but also, as you, as you said, we have a different uh, shape with the chambers inside. So we can, um, if you can imagine canal with the depth of eight feet, we use uh, vinyl sheet piles with chambers with the length eight, nine feet. We drive them, but in the chambers, we use uh, steel tubes or wood piles to reinforce the whole structure. So we're going to have uh, like an application for erosion protection, erosion control, but the, um, the role of vinyl sheet piles is the erosion protection. But the role of the steel tubes or wood piles is the reinforce the whole structure because wood or uh, or the steel tube is much more stronger material than the vinyl itself. So it's perfect solution also to build a very um, longevity um, infrastructure for canal protection, riverbed protection, lakes, uh, etc. is uh, becoming more and more popular because when we compare to the normal vinyl. Uh, sheet pile in a wall where we have to drive, uh, you know, one third above the bottom level of the lake, for example, and two third depends on the soil condition, it, it, it is varies, but there is a general rule like one third and two third in the ground right. is much more cheaper. Yeah. So, yeah, it's a great solution. Which is if, if you're going to have one foot exposed, you're going to have two foot in the ground. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's exactly. the old rule of thumb and sheets or vinyl sheets is the same, apparently. So, yeah, yeah for for that passive and active pressure to uh, to go to work. Now, there's a is where does the eco seal uh, come into play? Is that something in the interlocks that? What, yes, what is yes. This is our uh, recent innovation. If it's not, if it's recent, it doesn't mean it wasn't tested in a real condition. Uh, Echo Seal is a new line of product uh, based on vinyl sheet piles. It just is like vinyl sheet pile with, but with integrated gasket inside the female lock. We need to remember also that vinyl sheet piles have uh, female and male locks. The steel sheet piles have always the same locks. Vinyl have female and male locks. So inside the female lock, we decided to put uh, in a process of po post, uh, post extrusion, the integrated gasket made of soft PVC. Uh, what is very important that this gasket is added during the production of the whole profile. So it's not glue or welded afterwards, but it's thermally combined during the production of the whole profile. Uh, it means that it has a high resistance for a mechanical, chemical, and biological factor. It opens uh, big doors for applications related to environmental protection in, a, uh, in a, uh, projects where we, where we have uh, some pollution. For example, tailing dams. Uh, we did a quite interesting project in Kazakhstan in, in, in a mining uh, that belongs to Glencore, uh, one of the biggest uh, mine producers around the world from Switzerland, uh, where we built six uh, mile long uh, cutoff wall around tailing dam with the depth of uh, 35 feet into the ground. And it was the, the, the project that it wasn't possible to drive steel sheet pipes, but it was possible to drive vinyl sheet pipes, eco seal with integrated gasket. And um, the, the fact of present this gasket makes these uh, locks totally watertight. So 
uh, even uh, is it possible to find the, this video on uh, on YouTube where we uh, make the test field of this solution. So we drive um, vinyl sheet pipes into the sandy soil to uh, omit the clogging effect uh, of the of the soil into the logs. Then we just excavate both sides of this wall, and one side is filled with the water uh, color red to see any leaks through the logs just after the, the installation. So there wasn't, uh, there wasn't clogging effect. Uh, the locks, the, the clutches were totally tight, so we didn't observe any leaks. Now, we also got a certificate that our solution is uh, completely watertight. Uh, in our laboratory, the maximum pressure we achieved was two bars, so 20, 20 meters of water level. So it's more or less- Oh, that's 60. huge. That's, that's impressive. Yes. Yeah, exactly. So it opens, uh, as I said before, uh, new doors for application of vinyl sheet pipes as an alternative for a popular uh, liners, geomembranes. Uh, we did even very interesting project in Australia where we drive the vinyl sheet pipes with exposed like maybe uh, five feet above the ground level. And they were used to build uh, pools for evaporation, the salt brine. It, it is quite a similar pro uh, process to evaporation of the lithium uh, for uh, during the production of lithium. So they collect water right. from the ground, from the lakes, they put to the evaporation poles and they wait for, uh, for evaporation. But uh, every project in this type is made uh, building some kind of um, embankments made of soil. So it needs to, to use a, you know, a lot of earth, uh, earthworks, but then they use a bunch of you know the the, the square meter of the um, geomembranes liners uh, with our vinyl sheet pipes eco seal we just drive the vinyl uh, to create the, the the ponds and then we put the water inside and we have even the photos that uh, you can find the water level uh, three four foot above the ground level and on other side is completely dry no leaks just because of, uh, just thanks to our uh, gasket. So it's a great solution for uh, also solving the, the problems with the peatlands uh, drying out because it's an issue that is become more and more popular. We need to protect our peatlands because when they get in dry, they uh, emit a lot of uh, green, uh, green gases, uh, greenhouse gases uh, to the atmosphere, which increase the temperature uh, I'm not a specialist to saying if it's true or not. Probably it's true uh, because it's something natural. Uh, but yeah, we can we can protect the peatlands uh, against the, the drying out, which is very very important. Well, the Eco Seal, uh, you know, is an integrated gasket um, in the manufacturing process. Sounds like it's a, it's exactly. a, a pretty big. And job. also, it's, it's worth worth to emphasize and compare uh, this with the steel. For a steel, it's also possible to make the logs watertight, but we need to weld them or add, uh, add additional substances like a bitumen. But is uh, of course time and cost at the side. Here you have ready to use a product at the side. You just drive them like every other pipe. Right. Done. Yeah. Because they come now, do you pair the, the, the trapezoid sheeps into pairs when you deliver them? So the, are they paired in the factory? No, they... no. Uh, we just, uh, if it's necessary, if the client want, we pair the Z shape. But yeah. it's not recommended because it will reduce the, the possibility of the transport. Uh, uh, it, is, it will reduce the amount of the of the square foot uh, in the one container, for example. Oh, uh, I so, see. Yeah. But but they are so lightweight that uh, two uh, two you know people can can easily handle them at the side, even if they are twenty feet long. We have videos uh, that showing that is possible. So we don't have to use additional equipment, which also reduce the cost at the site. So when we talk about the cost, it's not only the cost of the material itself, it's the, the cost around. So the transport, the logistic at the site, the maintenance, yeah. Okay, so it's the same equipment, essentially. Uh, the only difference might be the contractor doing the installation might need to rent or 
utilize a mandrel. Other than that, it's yeah. a standard equipment. If it's hard driving, if it's not, then you know he's rolling, he's driving, and doing yeah, the installation. Exactly. Yeah, and there's belt exactly. and suspenders, and and um, you know that's uh, that's great. I, I I I think you know I think there's a bright future for vinyl sheets. I I, mm -hmm. I, I appreciate the time that you spent. Uh, with us today here at the the Pile Buck uh, podcast because it's all about foundations and pile driving and drilling and mm -hmm. and uh, we're looking for new ideas and different ways of of uh, of putting uh, uh, you know good products and 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 infrastructure in place and and I'm particularly interested in doing it one time and making it last a long time uh, because yeah, uh, exactly. it's all about the future generation so. Uh, yeah, I, I um, um, we're gonna put a wrap to it here because we like to keep them to about a half hour, and I think we should do this again. And um, you know, thank you for your time here at the Pile Buck Prod, uh, uh, Podcast here, uh, David Yazinski, and uh, he's a he's an engineer and in charge of ESC uh, vinyl uh, 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 sheet pile uh, initiatives, and I think they're doing a lot of great things. And give my best to uh, Bruce Colson when you see him. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much. And uh, keep thank building. You. Okay, thank you. Thank you for having me. Bye-bye. Cheers. Bye now.